Love him or hate him, Andrew Tate has a lot of thoughts about Chinese people. The Chinese are fearless, bro. The Chinese are extremely intelligent. I'll take that. China has conquered the entire earth. In an economic way, yeah. Have you ever seen a pregnant Chinese lady? Wait, what? The dudes with the smallest <laughs> dicks. We're obviously the Chinese and- all right, you know what? We gotta talk about this. Welcome everybody to the Hot Pop Boys. David and Andrew here. David, why should we even care at all what Andrew Tate has to say about Chinese people? Well, he does have 12 million hits, or, oh, I'm sorry, 12 billion hits on TikTok. And he is sort of this modern, like throwback masculinity figure on the internet. So it's like, you're not trying to take everything he says as fact, but you are trying to understand why he said it. Right, so, you know, someone's got to do the work of reacting and analyzing his most infamous quotes about Chinese people. And oddly enough, he only talks about Chinese people as like a different race outside of white and black people, it seems like. So, I don't know. It really always catches me off guard. So, let's talk about it, guys. If you guys are excited about this video, please hit that like button right now and check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Let's get into it. First clip. Have you ever seen a pregnant Chinese lady? What the fuck? I haven't. You see what I mean? What the fuck? They're smart, right? So, so the Chinese, what the Chinese do? Right? What the I'm Chinese do? What the fuck? Yo, this was the wildest reaction to just the oddest observation ever. I cannot believe how they, this is the first time any of these guys had ever thought of a pregnant Asian woman in their entire life before. Clearly. Yeah, it, they were sort of acting like 16 year old stoners having like a some sort of like mind blown moment. What do Asian women just lay eggs or like how do Asian, do they just respawn their aliens, right? Ah. I think the truth is this, they both live in areas that are very non-Asian. Miami is about 1% Asian. Uh, Romania is 0.2 of 1% Asian. The UK is not very East Asian, at least in terms of like, people from the Orient looking type look. And um, you know, that coupled with the fact that in East Asian culture, women in the third trimester are generally very much encouraged to stay at home or be sedentary or stay in the house and not be out and about, which is more of a Western thing. And yeah, obviously, you're just not gonna see that many pregnant Chinese women out between living in a place that's 1% Asian and then that culture on top of it. But yeah, I just don't know why it was like that mind blowing. Bro, I don't see that many like eight, month pregnant women out in the city of New York at all, like of any, you know, ethnicity, to be honest. And how do you know that these people are not Chinese? Because like, are they just referring to all Asians as Chinese? Like, I don't even know. Me and my brother eating a kebab in Iraq. We're sitting there eating a kebab. We start to hear an AK. We're like, what the fuck? We start looking around. Chinese don't even look. They don't even care. They're just sitting there eating a kebab. Yeah, AK. If you're going to shoot me in the head, shoot me in the head. But if not, I'll go to work tomorrow. They're straight about the money. And this is the third point. The Chinese will go anywhere for cash. If I had to say to you right now, you can make $10,000 a month if you go and live in the Democratic Republic of the Congo in a forest with malaria. Do you want to go? You'll say, no, it ain't worth the money. Whereas a Chinese person's like, yeah, money. Yeah, okay. If there's money, they'll go. <laughs> Yo, man, Andrew Tate says everything with so much conviction, even when he's like, wrong you know or just even when the observation is so basic listen there are chinese people all over the world there is like 1.4 billion chinese people globally if we're talking about the diaspora too and yes even 0.2 percent of them if they went out and went to like the middle east to work yeah i mean you're gonna see chinese people everywhere but to be honest that whole story about the gunfire to me it's just like yeah if you just lived in baghdad you probably wouldn't be phased by ak's rattling off you know in the distance anyways because to be honest that's probably just the environment out there yeah i mean long story short guys there are a lot of people in china who really like to work like their religion is work and getting paid in exchange for their work i will say this Chinese do have a very high tolerance for high risk exposure environments to get a better salary. I think that that's one thing that not every country has in the world, to be honest, especially people who are concerned with quality of life and day-to-day -day lifestyle. So I would say that that's the thing, but I will say this, uh, basing your whole viewpoint on Chinese people off like international migrants that you meet building infrastructure products, uh, projects in the Middle East or Africa or Barbados or wherever, that's not necessarily like the whole picture. Oh, and by the way, when it comes to Chinese people being fearless, uh, yeah, the ones who went to Baghdad are fearless. David, you know, we know a lot of like, uh, you know, risk adverse Chinese people and, and uh, you will meet them in America and Canada, okay? Yeah, <laughs> I will say this, it is true. I guess what he should have said is amongst a certain class or international class of like migrant worker, 
they're just willing to put up with like a surprising amount of risk exposure to get a better salary. I would I, but, agree with that. I mean, but I think a lot it's of, just a very, very broad generalization. I mean, a, a lot of people would. I've seen, you know, like Mexican people do things that are like considered dangerous. You know, that's it's just so he's like, oh, dude, Chinese people, there's so many of them and they just like to work. Mind blown. Chinese are very, very smart like that. Have you ever seen a Chinese per person working for someone who wasn't Chinese? Bro, now that I think about no, it, I have not. It. Not really. I have Yo, it's kind of funny because I was thinking about it, Andrew. Uh, me and you are on YouTube. The majority of our audience overall is Asian, and probably the largest slice of that Asian distribution is probably Chinese American. So I cannot dispute this, Andrew. We are Chinese in some weird way working for Chinese. That's one way to look at it. Uh, I would definitely say, like, when he's talking about Chinese people in this sense, he's clearly referring to, like, first-generation immigrants who probably share a common language and culture and community. So, obviously, they're going to work for each other. And they're just... These guys are just basing it off of, like, the shops that they know, like, maybe the restaurants or the massage parlors that they see. You know, like, like of course, these people all work together because... They all share the same language and like, you know, you build trust in your community. So it honestly just makes a lot of sense because a lot of immigrants do that. And by the way, obviously, when he says Chinese, he's not referring to any sort of second generation like Americanized Chinese because we know Asian Americans obviously work for a lot of different companies. You know what I realized though, man, is that so many people interface with so many different types of Chinese people. Like, let's say for example, you work in like microchips or the semiconductors, you're gonna interface with a lot of Chinese people that have PhDs. But if you live in Miami or Brazil or like the UK or Romania, you're probably gonna interface more with like a blue collar, like factory type or like a merchant hand to hand type situation. And so everybody's like image of Chinese people is really shaped by like the segment of a gigantic pie that they interface with. Wait, David, you're saying that the Chinese that are living in Romania aren't the tech Chinese? Aren't the, you know, grad school, you know, educated Chinese? Yeah, I don't know. It's like, it's such a... It is it's, different, it's I will basic, say this. I'm not saying that these Chinese people don't exist. I'm not saying that actually, because I know Tate is clearly an intelligent guy and he's sharp, but he's really just basing it off of the Chinese people he just sees in his life. And he doesn't have any Chinese friends. I know that. Because the Chinese are extremely intelligent. And, and what the Chinese Facts. are, they're like ant people. We all work together for the good of the ant. For the, they're bees. We yeah. work together for the good of the hive. Chinese are very, very smart like that. When you have countries like China, where they're like a beehive, they all work together. Um, basically... Andrew Tate had a colorful way of just saying that Chinese have a collectivist mindset. And this is something that like a lot of social scientists have been saying for years. Well, East Asia in general is way more collectivist and it's due to Confucianism and it's due to this and it's due to that. And the Western world has always been more individualistic. But, you know, to really analyze this, there's so many different charts and there's social scientists like Hofstede's, you know, global metrics. They've broken down power distance, hierarchy, femininity, masculinity. They got like so many charts. But here's the interesting thing. I will give Andrew Tate props is because he's sort of, and by the way, I'm not saying I agree with him, especially his views on women. I'm just saying he does make people a crowd that will never think about the words collectivism and individualism and Hofstede global metrics like I guess he gets their brains to turn a little bit. Yeah, it's really interesting how Andrew Tate, whenever he talks about Chinese people, apparently he's a Chinese professor. And like people take him, uh, his word, because like he's, he, his audience is like people who don't really think about Chinese people a lot, in my opinion. I mean, I think some people know something, but really uh, the way he says things is very simplified and entertaining. So, uh, I mean, basically what he's just saying is like, I think if I had to agree in some way, I think it's because like, it doesn't, it's not obvious that a lot of Chinese people are thinking about their own life and like only having fun. They're honest, honestly, it seems like they're thinking about like a multi generational benefit to their work and setting things up for just the next generation. Just taking the long view on things. Yeah. Or like just, really, really long view. Yeah. Just seeing the generational view on things and not just like they're weak. But honestly, I actually have my own thoughts on this. And it's like really individualism and collectivism those are the macro trends within each country but when i analyze like the west on a micro level and like the east or like specifically china on a micro level it almost feels like china's more individualistic 
than America is on a micro level, but on a macro societal sense and their ability to implement things and then just like go along with those changes, it's more collectivist on a macro level. So even within saying that something is individualistic and one thing is like collectivist, there's like different tiers of what you're seeing at micro, mid, macro. Anyway, moving on. I was like, are you telling me we spent all that money blowing this place up and now the Chinese are just gonna rebuild it and get paid? That's what's happening. Cause we won't do it because of human rights, sanctions, all this crap. This is how China is gonna conquer the world. It's not gonna conquer the world through some big military. People go, oh, China and America are gonna have a war. There's not gonna be no big war, none of that dumb shit. It's gonna be conquer the world fiscally. It's gonna be conquering the world financially. It's doing that through investing in foreign and developing markets where no one else is, is interested. Or the people who are interested are hindered because of international sanctions or hindered by their ability to risk their life for a few dollars profit. And the Chinese don't give a fuck. Yeah, I mean, what? I feel like Andrew Tate did is read like five to 10 articles on Reuters about the China and Africa like relations, which there is a lot going on there for sure if you wanna read into it. Um, and then he's able to regurgitate it or translate it for an audience that doesn't know anything about what's going on. So now it seems mind blowing like, oh my gosh, Andrew Tate has this like secret uh, knowledge and he's got the inside scoop on what's going on in Africa. No, there are tons of articles written about it. It's just that, you know, your crowd, this crowd probably doesn't read into it, you know? That's not what they're interested in, which I understand because he is a masculine Western male, like pro man icon, which that group of people probably don't Google these things a lot. Yeah, I mean, I think they're more f focused on like what is happening in the immediate like one or two rings out of just focus like, on like getting buff and getting uh, girls yeah, on, top, on top of their their daily life. Like whatever this geopolitical stuff is like seven, eight, nine rings away, depending on, you know, unless they work in import export or something. I mean, I do think that it does play into his larger message because he kind of has this thing where he's like, we need to restore patriarchy to save the West and the West is going down to China because we're not doing what China is doing, which is investing in third world countries. We're just blowing up Iraq and China's coming in and rebuilding the infrastructure and getting the payment for it. And I mean, what he's saying, there's some truth to it in the sense that over the past 10 years, you could argue that the metrics in America in terms of life expectancy, drug use, certain negative metrics have slid back. And certain metrics, obviously, in China, in terms of how people are just happy with, like, quality of life or whatever, um, not necessarily freedom or whatever, but that's not necessarily what they value, has went up. So it sort of, like, plays along with his whole, like, if we let wokeness take over, it'll ruin the West, and the West can no longer be competitive. But this also plays another part in why the West can't be competitive. Yeah, 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 I would agree. And it also is weird how he always does talk about how China's going to take over, China's going to take over, and... Yeah, it's just trying to push his whole message and prove that people need to like go back to the patriarchy that he always preaches uh, to but save the Western it, it's society. It's weird though that him and some other Manosphere guys have always said that China's gonna take over, but then simultaneously, they do sort of make fun of Chinese men specifically. Which comes to our, uh, brings us to our last quote. Just play the clip, man. I had women who worked for me on webcam and we ran a studio, it was a big operation, right? And the dudes with the smallest dicks were obviously the Chinese. And All right, uh, did you know, obviously this falls in line with popular stereotypes. And when he's talking about Chinese customers, how does he know they're all Chinese? I don't know. I mean, obviously I think there's a certain type of guy who would pay a lot of money to talk to these women, whoever these women are that he's employing. I mean, I've even heard these stereotypes, let's be honest, from like Logan Paul, Joe yeah. Rogan, yeah. Andrew Schultz. I mean, there's so many people that are popular in this almost like type of like sphere right now. And it's like, sort of like these Nemoidians that are really smart, but they're dweeby with small peepees are gonna take over the, uh, you know, the galactic empire. I'm, I'm just making a Star Wars reference right here. It's like, it's a really common thing that you see, but then I'm like, oh wait, so you're saying the Chinese, guys are dweeby and have small weenies, but they are gonna take over the world. And especially for masculine macho men like him, you know, uh, penis size is always that one thing that you're trying to use so that you know how to judge the other guy on. Like if he has a small penis, but he's smart and successful, you can always have that on and be like, ah, he got a small peepee, you know, whatever. He's smart or whatever. He, he does his thing, he's productive, but he got a small peepee. And it's always a way to write people off. And he is, I, I do think his, him and his crowd kind of low key are writing off whatever productivity Chinese people are doing right now. No, I would say that that's how that entire crowd is writing it off. Like, of course they see the work, they know that the West or at least Western Anglo countries do not want to do that work or they're restricted from doing it or just have no interest in it. Um, 
but they're like kind of like I don't want to say they're like downplaying it, but it's sort of like give and take, give and take. Lot, a lot of backhanded compliments and also just like straight up dismissive disses. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm not too hurt about it. I just have, you know, laugh. All right. So to wrap it up, um, why do you think he's only always talking about Chinese people? Like, what is it? Is it because like I would have to imagine that in Romania, the only Asians that are there are probably Chinese. Like, I don't imagine a lot of Koreans and Japanese and Vietnamese people in Romania. Uh, I think that it's the only one that's maybe opposing to the West, too, that seems like a rival. Like, Japan and Korea seem like great places to live, but they pretty much seem, like, on Team Western, so there's, like, no point in talking about them, and they're pretty small countries relatively to China. So, I mean, I just think a lot of these people... They like want to analyze what's happening in like a historian type of way, but also they don't want to feel impacted on by it in their personal life. Yeah. Also that they want to acknowledge that like this whole China's going to take over economically thing, but it's not going to be a cool takeover. It's not going to be threatening. Like I'll always be able to beat up every Chinese person I ever met anyways, even if they took over the world. And, you know? and probably a pretty yeah. large portion of their women will still prefer yeah. me over them. But yes, of course, we cannot do what they're doing with the yeah. infrastructure projects. And, and they'll always joke about it and acknowledge it, but they'll never really do a lot of research into Chinese people. They'll never have a Chinese friend to like bounce these ideas right. back and forth about. They'll just be like, yeah, I read some articles and I saw some Chinese people with my own eyes. And these are the conclusions I came up with. Long story short, I think two things really strike me. I would say that it's always interesting to see these like smart blue collar self-taught philosopher bros like make snap judgments on Chinese people. I remember Logan Paul one time was like, yeah, I noticed a lot of Asian dudes are like kind of feminine, but then they don't really drink cow's milk in Asia. They only drink soy milk. Soy milk produces estrogen. That's why Asian dudes are feminine to me. And Yo, he thought like, he figured it out. Yeah, he was he like- He solved it. <laughs> he was like, dude, Asian guys, I figured it out. Stop drinking soy milk. Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, trust me. It's like, it, it, it's just, it's because we got to get, all get along with each other. I think that, you know, the smart bro, quick snap judgments is one thing that always like strikes me as like hilarious because, you know, the conviction that they say that they know everything with, even though I get where they're coming from because they're just making a quick read based on like a general generalization that sounds like truish. That's why it goes viral. Number two, I will say this, Andrew, uh, sample size, sample size, sample size. If you never got the reps and the reps are not like distributed or all across the plot chart, you do not have a full accurate assessment. You only have a read of what you're looking at. It's a little bit like eight, the eight blind wise men and who are taught to uh, say, yo, go feel up this elephant and tell me what an elephant is. And one guy's like, yeah, it's just a big floppy ear. And one guy's like, I don't know, it's just like a tusk. And the other guy's like, oh, I don't know, it's just a heavy foot. They're all wise men, so they have good brains or quick brains at least, but they're just like, they don't have the full picture. And last but not least, I will say when it comes to, you know, at least as far as like, the things that China's doing in the world, it's kind of viewed like the Spurs, like the Tim Duncan, Ginobili, Tony Parker Spurs that was winning championships. It just would like seem so unappealing and boring and like workmanlike. It wasn't like the Showtime Lakers with Magic Johnson and Kareem and James Worthy, but it almost feels like right now that the West is almost picking like the Showtime Clippers, like Lob City, where they have all the highlights, but they would rather run it that way than like become like the Spurs because like, the China plan is like the Spurs boring, no highlight basketball. And that's why everybody wants to be the Warriors. Right. Because it the looks mix. like they got both. My final takeaway is just that Andrew Tate is this like kickboxer who's rich that now lives like a drug lord in a foreign country. And it's, a lot of guys find it really appealing. So <laughs> <laughs> anytime he says anything uh, that is new to them or some new information, people are like mind blown. And they're like, dude, you know that? Wow, you're like so smart, you know? And he is intelligent, he, he reads like articles and stuff like that. I don't think he really has time to read books, but you know, at the end of the day, like he's just this great translator, just taking this information from these articles and giving it to an audience that doesn't, that is at, that that sees him like an aspirational prophet almost, you know, it's very interesting. And then also I think for a lot of people out there wondering like, hey guys, why should we even care what Andrew Tate or any of these guys think about Asian guys and, and, and Chinese people at all? Like who cares about these guys? And I think it's because I don't, wanna, I don't wanna live in a bubble, you know? Like these people are very much the voices of a lot of Americans, a lot of Western men, and a lot of men 
globally. Like, low key though, low yeah, key, yeah, low key. Uh, but he's high key, dude. These guys, like a lot of men, listen to these guys. You know, so you have a friend that actually low key likes Andrew Tate and what he says, like for sure, and you, agrees with like maybe like seventy five percent. Yeah, of to be honest, you do. So I'm saying when he's speaking about our people, something so specific, Chinese people specifically, I'm like, we gotta know what he's saying, and we gotta be able to understand where he's short-sighted in his perspective. And, you know, that's just more power to us to recognize that, you know, no, he's not the smartest guy. And while maybe some of what he has said is true, uh, a lot of it's not, or a lot of it's uninformed, you know? So I think it's just important for Asians and Chinese people to just know, you know? And we that's why we broke it down. I mean, do I agree with Andrew Tate? No, on a lot of issues, we just broke down, you know, why he was wrong or, or like partially wrong on some of these issues or completely. But I do think it's important to understand, like you said, why he's so popular because like Western men made him like one of the most viewed people in the world last month. And it's just one guy like just saying things in a passionate way, whether he's like fully knows what he's talking about or not. People love it. All right, everybody, we're going to end it right there. Please let us know in the comments down below what you think about his quotes about Chinese people. Um, just let us know what you think. And let us know what you think about Andrew Tate overall because, uh, you know, we're not just doing this for views. Guys, we're doing this because he's literally... Chinese people is the only ethnicity of people he actually specifically addresses it's like apparently chinese people are very like relevant to his life or he's seen a lot or it, it sticks with him guy i don't know you could take that as a compliment maybe that you know chinese people uh own space in his mind okay they they're rent free in his head all right guys so thank you so much for watching the hot pot boys and until next time we out peace, peace.